Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Nicole and I am so excited that Sean asked former creative team members to participate in this little YouTube hop to spread a little joy and have some fun. We're all using the same stencil and she's calling this one stencil 12 ways. For my project, I'm using this Dina Wakely Media Journal with a regular watercolor paper side on the left and the burlap side on the right. I started out by gessoing the left side really heavily and then spreading some of that gesso over to the burlap side on the right. Once my gesso was dry, I grabbed my matte medium and these pieces of ephemera that I printed from Sean Petit's website, I'll have that linked below. I generously spread the matte medium on the front and the back to adhere these securely to my journal pages. I wasn't having as much success sticking those papers to the burlap side, so I grabbed the Dina Wakely Media Ultra Thick Gel and used that to secure those pages to the burlap side. I used it really um, heavily on the front and the back so I could make sure that those pages didn't uh, pop up when I was adding uh, more paint and other mediums to these pages. I chose these papers because they were kind of um, fall colored, kind of old and um, worn looking. I love numbers and handwriting, so I wanted those to pop through in my background as I added other layers. Sean has a lot of other um, printables that you can find on her website if you're having trouble finding ledgers and old paper. And the best part about hers is that you can print it over and over again and you don't have to worry about using um, prized pages that you won't get to use again in your journals. Then I picked up my gesso again. I like to kind of soften the layers and make um, the background a little bit more cohesive so it doesn't stand out after I've added those papers to my first layer. I also like the fact that um, when you add the gesso, the paint that you add next kind of um, clings to the pages and the background a little bit differently and adds to that overall fun mixed media effect. So I'm just using my fingers, softening the edges of the papers so they don't stand out and creating just other surfaces for my next layers to cling onto. I also like to water down the gesso a little bit, grab a paintbrush and use that on top of the paper so it's thinner and also kind of Pulling it on those pages for some good puddles. For my next layer, I grabbed Sean Petit's number stencil and this Liquitex Carbon Black spray paint. I just simply sprayed it through the stencil in a few areas. Um, you'll notice I have a couple blobs <laughs> here and there. I didn't really concern myself with that because I'll be adding another layer of gesso um, next that I can cover up those blobs with. I also flipped the stencil over to get the um, reverse effect of those numbers. I find that that adds a little bit more interest and some more black blobs to the page. So then I grab my gesso again and use the same uh, process with my fingers. This time I'm concentrating on softening the edges of the stencils, pushing parts of them back so it doesn't look like they stand on top, covering up those blobs that I created and any other um, overspray or parts that look funny. This is just again to soften this layer up and prepare it to add more mediums. So 
So once all those layers of gesso are dry, now it's time to add the color. I grabbed all of the fallish <laughs> looking colors, basically all the warm colors from the Dina Wakely Media paint line. And as I'm putting them on my palette paper, I kept all the pinks and reds on the left and the oranges on the right, and then the copper penny color and the brown um, umber color on the bottom. This way, as I'm blending and mixing like crazy there, the colors will blend together um, a little bit better on my palette paper. And it kind of um, helped me so I knew as I was reaching that the um, reds and the pinks were on the left and those oranges were on the right. So I'm watering down this paint a little bit. I love how her paint can add a little watercolor effect if you water it down. And I'm just painting on my background layer so that the colors and blend together for kind of a fall look. When you choose all warm colors like this, they'll easily blend together and you won't get that muddy effect. And so I'm just going back and forth, I'm grabbing colors, um, flinging the paint a little bit to add some random um, drops and surprises and enjoying um, painting a little bit of a fall background. I also put in some of that umber and the copper to kind of grunge or mute the colors. They were getting a little bright. And so I'm flicking that as well and adding that to my layers. I'm also adding those colors to that burlap side and I will add more layers of color on that burlap side in the future. Next, I grabbed the fall leaf stencil that we were all given to use for this hop, and I decided to trace the shapes on the inside using my Stabilo All Pencils. I didn't want to interrupt my creative process here, so I grabbed three of them, sharpened them up really um, to a good point there so that I could trace the stencils and not have to sharpen them in the middle. And so I just um, picked out the different leaf shapes and traced around the outsides or the insides of the stencils with my Stabilo pencils. I covered up that left side of my journal pages with um, falling leaves in a pattern that looked good to me at the time. When I'm done filling that left side with the leaves, I grab my paintbrush and some water and activate that stibilo. I find that it's not shading as much as I wanted, so I also scribble my stibilo there on the palette paper, add some water to create some extra, I like to call it a stibilo puddle, and create some extra of that inky paint um, stibilo puddle to shadow and shade inside those leaf shapes. And I go around on the page and do this same process for all of the leaves. Once all of those leaves are shaded and they're dry, I begin to now fill in the leaves with some more color. I didn't really have a plan or um, an intention here other than just to make the leaves look darker and fall. So I kind of looked at what the background of the leaf was already and added more of that color or if I wanted it to contrast from the background that was there, like if it was a, you know, a raspberry color, I would grab the orange like I did here to make that leaf stand out. And so I'm just painting in all of these leaves with the different colors that were already on my palette to make them pop out from that background a little bit more.
as I'm painting, I kind of watch the other leaves and add more color as I needed as the colors mingle and dry. And then I also um, did some more splattering of the paint on these leaves. Some of my favorite fall leaves are the ones that you pick up and they have those like polka dots or speckles of deep oranges and coppers in them. So I wanted to kind of recreate that on my leaves as well. So I'm just splattering some additional little um, spots or texture onto those leaves. Since I like the direction that splattering was going, I grabbed the penny and did the same thing, watered it down and just splattered that all over the pages to kind of get that glistening fall metallic color to the pages. As I was staring at these pages for the past few minutes, I decided that that right burlap side didn't have enough of those black numbers, so I grabbed um, some paper and the stencil and made a little mask to uh, spray paint those numbers on that burlap side as well. Once those spray painted numbers are dry, I want to layer more color onto this right side. Um, you'll see why in a minute, or if you've already seen the preview, you'll know that I need some more color on this page so my um, next um, plan for this side would look a little bit better. So now we're flipping back to that left side where we wait for those layers of color on the right to dry and I grab a charcoal pencil to out, um, sketch an outline or of a lady. I had kind of a plan in mind that I wanted her to have um, her hand on her hip and one hand behind her back and I'm trying really hard to accomplish that. The reason I chose a charcoal pencil here is because it erases really easily and doesn't leave behind um, lines or evidence of the mistakes and you'll see that I yeah needed a lot of wiping here <laughs> to get her into the shape that I wanted um, and I just had some patience and worked on trying to get her to look like I pictured in my brain. It took a little bit to get her there and it still wasn't there and so I let her rest a minute and started to work back on that right side. So the really neat thing about this stencil from Sean is that it also comes with the inside of the leaves, the masks, and so I decided to use those on the right side, and so I just arranged them in little um, arrangement of leaves here. I tried to pick um, a bunch of different shapes and lay them on the pages, and then I also concentrated on where I wanted to see the burlap because I'm going to paint around these shapes and so I was using the shapes to mask any areas that I really didn't want black paint to cover up. So next I grabbed this little foam applicator tool and my black gesso to use um, on these little um, stencil masks and I simply just stencil around them. I used my finger to hold down the middle and I painted from the inside out. That way, if you go from the outside in, you're more apt to get the paint under the stencil, but if you go from the inside out, it'll help to not have funny lines or bleeding under your stencil. So I really, really had to restrain myself. I wanted to spray the spray paint on this page instead of this process, but I was really nervous that when I sprayed, the leaves would fly everywhere and it would mess up the page. So I decided to play it safe and use um, this process that I knew a little bit better with the foam applicator and the black gesso. So you'll also notice that some of the leaves I don't get painted around as well as I wanted and I'll just put those leaves back on and repeat the process. It was kind of hard to tell in the burlap if I had the black dark enough and so the good thing about these shapes is you can just pick them up and uh, stencil again if you need to add a little bit more black. I also pick up my paintbrush. That foam applicator is a little large and so it was harder to get it in between the shapes. And so I picked up a brush to dunk into that uh, black gesso and just lightly paint around in the areas that I needed it to be a little bit darker. I wanted the this um, arrangement of leaves and the black to look cohesive and not look like there's like lots of separation between them. So I needed to add some of that gesso in between the leaves to get that look.
So I've been staring at my lady on the left this whole time trying to figure out what's wrong with her and I decided that her head wasn't centered so I used a baby wipe to wipe off her head and draw it back in her neck and her head and that helped um, get that look I was looking or going for a little bit more. She didn't look so lopsided and so um, just a, you know, a tip or an advice if it's what you've drawn isn't settling right with you you know, look away for a little bit and come back to it and then maybe you'll see um, what exactly was wrong. So now I wanna carry that black over to the left side um, around my silhouette of the lady. And I showed you my paintbrush here just so you could see what type of paintbrush I was using. I'm using a filbert and I like the roundness of it to help um, curve around the lady a little bit more and make softer lines. And I also made sure as I'm doing this, that I don't add any water to this gesso. I wanted it to be a dry brush technique. I didn't want, you know, super solid black around here because on the left, the black isn't um, going into that burlap as much. So if I had her all solid with the black around, it wouldn't have um, molded into that other side as well. So using a dry brush technique kind of makes it a little bit more scruffy, a little bit grungier and matches that side of the burlap a little bit more. So I'm just using this filbert brush to go around the lady and just lightly dry brush around her. So I'm just continuing the dry brush process and refining her silhouette. It's easier to start, you know, a little looser around her and then tighten it in as you need to define the shape. And then I also took my dry brush and went a little bit farther onto the left, but with a really light hand, I wanted to just kind of catch that texture that was left behind from the gesso and from the pages below. And you can see it's just picking up a little bit of black scuffy um, dry brush here and there to kind of make that black go to the left, but not completely go to the left. So I had this vision of wanting a circle from the leaves and around the lady behind, and I didn't, didn't want my circle to be lopsided, so I grabbed this little plate in my studio and just traced around it with a white charcoal pencil this time, again, so I could erase it and get that um, good circle shape for my foundation. And now to make that circle permanent, I grabbed my fine line applicator. Inside this bottle is about 50-50 white paint and um, airbrush medium. You could, I'll, you'll have to kind of judge for yourself how thick or how, um, how not thick, <laughs> couldn't think of the word, how thin you want it to come out. So I don't fill my bottle all the way up. I fill it about half to three fourths. That way if I need to add more airbrush medium or more paint, I have that little wiggle room to get it to the perfect viscosity <laughs> that I want that paint to be. So I'm taking an art class with an artist um, from Houston and it's a Zoom call and it's Saturday mornings and it's been so life-giving and I've really enjoyed, um, it's only been a couple weeks, but I've really enjoyed it. And the first week she um, presented this poem for us to to meditate on and to journal about and it just really resonated with me and so as I was thinking about what to do for this page and the seasons and seasons of life and my birthday is this week well it'll be after this is posted but just thinking about um, another year of life and just how you know there's so much you want to do and so much in a season and so much you want to accomplish and it's so hard to accomplish everything and the turning of the leaves and the seasons it just really came together when I thought about the stencil and the poem and the season in my life and what everyone's been through and 
Yeah, so I wanted to use <laughs> this poem on my page. So I, I used that fine line bottle and wrote part of the poem around that circle. And now I'm going to type out part of the poem as well on my typewriter. The poem was really long, so I just picked um, two of the stanzas or paragraphs that resonated with me the most and typed those out um, here on my typewriter. And I'll have um, a link to the poem below in the description if you want to read all of the words or perhaps use it in your artwork as well. And I forgot to mention as I was rambling a bit there that I also used that fine line bottle um, with the white to define my silhouette shape a little bit and to add some little sketchy lines. Um, if you'll go back, you'll see the process of me doing that as well. So now that that white paint is dry, I'm using a baby wipe again here to wipe off the um, charcoal so it's not so funny looking. And now I'm going to um, cut apart these um, lines that I had typed to use them on my pages. My original vision was to kind of fill her dress with my favorite paragraph from the poem. And so here I am just trying to figure out how I want to do that. First I cut the lines into their full um, stanzas or lines or whatever the, the correct poem poetic term is I'm forgetting. And then I decided I didn't like how long they were. So I'm cutting them up into the smaller phrasing and I'm, I'm going to use matte medium and stick those down in her dress. Now my typewriter, for some reason the ink um, works really well with matte medium and doesn't run. But if you're using a printer or a typewriter, you might experiment to see if the matte medium is gonna make um, your ink run when you use it on the pages. I um, have had to use a fixative before if I'm printing sometimes if the ink gets runny with different paints or mediums that I use. And I also wanted to mention that I did type that on leftover ephemera from the Champetit um, pages that I didn't use. And now I'm just sticking down the other part of that poem that I typed out. Um, the top part is the other paragraph that I really liked. And then the bottom is the um, author's name to the poem so that I give um, the author credit on my pages. So now it's just the final touches. I'm going to add a little bit of a puddle of white here and flick some little white dots onto my page so that um, it'll go around the circle and around my writing. I'm um, not worried here about it going everywhere because I'm going to use a baby wipe and wipe up the dots that I don't like. I don't really want them in the black, but I didn't want to worry about that in the process. So I knew that I would um, wipe those up. I'm also going to use some um, of my Stabilo puddle again and put that on the words um, of the poem. I'm gonna grab my stapler here and add just some little, I thought it needed something. I wanted <laughs> the staple texture for some reason. So I added the staples. I add the stabilo to the words and I also add some black paint around the edges of the words just so that they didn't um, stand out on the page and then looked like they blended in and belong belonged, <laughs> sorry, on the pages. And that's it, that's my final project. I really hope you enjoyed this hop, um, the 12 amazing artists and all these crazy creative projects that we've been able to create that are so different with using the same stencil. Make sure you stay to the end to click on um, the next person in the hop. The list will also be below in the description box along with supplies and every, every other piece of information like the poem that you wanted to know. I want to thank Sean so much for gathering us all together for this little hop and I wish you all a wonderful fall season full of beautiful leaves, more beautiful than I get here in South Texas. Hope you all have a wonderful day and if you create using the stencil or my create my process here or whatever I did, be sure to tag me. I'd love to see how this page inspires you. Thanks again for watching. Oh, and I forgot to mention, there's a giveaway. Sean is generously giving away a stencil for each video, so make sure you comment below for a chance to win a stencil. Thanks again.